I think this is a very exciting time for both the ALS Association's research program and ALS research in general. We are really in a position with many new technologies and opportunities to certainly find therapies for the disease. It will take a little more time to find a cure to really understand the underlying causes and there are likely many causes of the disease. But I think that the programs are now moving from a point of just understanding disease to bringing ideas and therapies to the clinic. So I think it's a very promising time for investigators to be engaged in this effort and I do believe that we are very close to finding meaningful therapies for ALS. ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or more commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease, is a disease that affects cells called motor neurons in the brain and the spinal cord. These cells have very long projections from the spinal cord to muscles about a meter in length. And when these connections are broken, for reasons that we are not quite clear about, muscles waste away and paralysis occurs. So it's really a loss of a connection between the cell body and the muscle, and this causes paralysis and ultimately death in ALS. So as we learn more about ALS, it's clear that ALS is a complex disorder. Five to 10% of the disease is caused by genetics, passed from one family member to another but the majority of ALS is sporadic. We think that it's likely due to influences of the environment together with a person's own genetic makeup. Um, whether it's going to be multiple genes involved in the disease or multiple environmental factors remains unclear. Why we think it's so, there are so many causes is that it manifests very differently. In some cases you might get uh, weakness in the limbs. In other cases, your swallowing and speech is affected. The disease might progress very rapidly, or in other cases, it might be very slow. So it definitely is a disorder where there are many causes and it manifests in many different ways. The ALS Association's research program is a global effort to fund scientists worldwide and support any good ideas focusing on understanding the disease and bringing these good ideas from the bench to the bedside. We are able to fund at any time of the year and all our projects are peer reviewed by well-known scientists, people within the field and those that are experts outside of the ALS field. We have certainly seen major advances in the ALS field. If I think in about 10 years ago when I started to work in the lab developing one of the mouse models for ALS, and I look back then at how many investigators and scientists were working in the field, to now more than tenfold the number of people, it's really encouraging both because of the tools and the technology, and also because our understanding of the disease has significantly advanced that scientists are really excited to be engaged in the research and even the biotech sector is much more engaged in trying to work on developing therapies for the disease. So it's an incredibly uh, encouraging and exciting time and I do think that we are at a stage where we could make significant advances to develop therapies for the disease. Currently there's only one treatment that makes any difference in terms of survival for ALS patients and that's Rilutec. And recognizing that we had such a good opportunity with researchers and new technologies, the ALS Association's research program launched Treat ALS, a translational program to bring good ideas from the bench to the bedside. This is certainly ambitious and drug discovery or the development of therapies for any disease like Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's is extremely challenging. So it's no different for ALS. However, I'm very hopeful 
with the number of biotechs that are now engaged in thinking about the disease and our much better understanding of these diseases in general, we are likely to find a therapy that will make a difference and we can move this from lab to bed and hopefully find something meaningful for patients. Over the past few years, there's been a lot of excitement about the potential of stem cells. Unfortunately, a lot of it has been hype as well. And so at the ALS Association's research programs, we really do focus on funding a lot of basic research in stem cells. And I believe at the moment, the most exciting and the greatest potential for stem cells is their use in drug development and drug screening. Stem cells have the ability in using the right manipulations to develop into motor neurons, which are the cells affected in ALS, and other cells of the brain. And this is very exciting because we can actually develop treatments and therapies by using these cells in a dish and really modeling the disease in a dish. In terms of therapy, there are many efforts as well in model systems of the disease to see if we can move this along. One of the challenges for stem cells, particularly in ALS, is the concept of replacing dying cells. The motor neuron, which is the key cell involved in the disease, has a very, very long projection or process which connects to the muscle. And it's hard to imagine that we know exactly where to place these stem cells, which we can turn into motor neurons, and then hope that these motor neurons are going to correctly connect to the muscle and function. This is at the moment a very ambitious task, but I do believe that stem cell biology, understanding how to manipulate them and the potential for them is very valid in ALS and for this reason we support many efforts in understanding them and their use in ALS.